Hey all, my name is Patrick Lyons and today I'm going to talk about how I advanced from low testosterone to normal testosterone levels and how I then progressively increased it further. Basically, I want to give context behind all of this. First of all, if you haven't been to my channel before, hello, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoy what you're about to see, but be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and drop a comment. If anything you hear during the video you find interesting, you have questions about, always happy to answer everything from a science-based perspective. Uh, that's what I focus on. I'm all about the science. But yeah, to give you context, I had low testosterone back in May of 2020. You might remember that this was only about two, two and a half months after the start of the COVID pandemic in America. And what that meant is that one, I had been like literally just sitting inside of my apartment in Seattle and I had like blackout curtains and I wasn't being super mindful about vitamin D and everything. So I had low vitamin D levels and vitamin D is essential in the production of testosterone. So that was one thing. But the other and probably bigger thing is that I had been in a calorie deficit sustained for 22 weeks. That is literally more than five months straight. This wasn't the plan, uh, but basically because of COVID, I wasn't able to do some of the things that I had been planning on doing about three, four months into the year, namely a DEXA scan and photo shoots. And so because of that, I continued being in a calorie deficit for a full 22 weeks, more than five months. And when you were in a sustained calorie deficit for too long, it can definitely impair your testosterone production. And so my levels dropped to 240 nanograms per deciliter. And usually the cutoff for low testosterone is somewhere around 250 to 260 nanograms per deciliter. So I wasn't like super low, but I was definitely low in that regard. The other thing is that because I was living on my own as an adult and running my own business and working in a corporate job, I wasn't prioritizing healthy food all of the time. I was prioritizing macros, which are excellent for body recompositional changes. But if you were consuming a majority processed pre-made foods from the store, from the supermarket, whatever, that aren't like freshly made and have, you know, a laundry list of ingredients on the back, uh, processed foods have directly been shown to impair your testosterone production um, as compared to whole food plant-based diet with, uh, you know, the healthiest options possible. So I had all these things working against me that contributed to why I was at only 240 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone. Fast forward a full year later, June of 2021, and I had actually doubled my testosterone levels from 240 to 482 nanograms per deciliter. This put me in the normal healthy range of testosterone, and this was for a number of reasons. One, pretty much everything that I just described, I corrected. So I moved back to Texas, I was exposed to sunlight um, on a very regular basis. You can tell like this is natural light streaming into where I'm uh, at in Texas. The sunlight is prolific here, proliferate, whatever the right word is. It's amazing, I love it, and I'm definitely getting sufficient vitamin D, and I'm supplementing just as a precautionary measure. Also, by June of 2021, I was in a calorie deficit again because I was cutting for a vacation, I wanted to look my best, but it was for nowhere nearly as long and it wasn't for as great of a, uh, of a calorie deficit, meaning I wasn't losing as much weight as quickly. Furthermore, and I didn't mention this or allude to this previously, but as you might remember, in May of 2020, gyms were closed, which means that I was forced to do at-home workouts um, for resistance training. And this means I wasn't able to push nearly as much weight and likely wasn't able to stimulate as many muscle fibers. I was definitely doing my very best and I was still maintaining, if not progressing in my fitness, but nowhere nearly as quickly or as reliably as I could in a normal gym environment. So once I moved back to Texas in August of 2020, from that point forward, I had access to a full scale gym with barbells, dumbbells, machines, the whole gamut, and was definitely able to stimulate as many muscle fibers as possible uh, with every workout to a, you know, a fatiguing point. So that was in my favor as well, because when you can stimulate a greater number of muscle fibers, uh, testosterone production is optimized in that regard as well. So I had vitamin D, I had uh, less of a calorie deficit, I had sustained, like consistent workouts uh, with resistance training in a gym, stimulating as many muscle fibers as possible. All of these things were working in my favor. And not only that, I was a heck of a lot less stressed. Like living in Texas, I've been so, so, so much happier. Um, the remote work world here has felt more free for me um, compared to more restricted 
in uh, Seattle where I was just, you know, pretty much all alone. So when you add all those things up together, it meant that I was in a much better spot for testosterone optimization. Um, and what that also equates to, oh, the other thing I want to mention is because I was living at home, I had my mom's home cooked food and that meant that I was having very, very high quality produce, whole, whole food, plant-based diet, 80% of my diet, plus high quality meats, things like that. Um, all of this favored in toward optimizing my testosterone levels. And it just felt amazing to, uh, to you know, see that change happen in my body and in my energy levels and everything like that. So. This is all to say that if you find yourself in this position in which you have low testosterone, obviously you can talk to your doctor about it and I'm not advocating against that in any way whatsoever. Um, but at the very least, you can make lifestyle changes that can potentially optimize where you are at. Eating high quality foods, getting consistent vitamin D, getting high quality sleep, being low in stress, stimulating a lot of muscle fibers through the workouts that you do, uh, building upon your muscle mass in general, decreasing your fat mass, all of those contribute to testosterone optimization. And if one of the points I just said seems counterintuitive about dropping body fat, and I mentioned the calorie deficit previously could impair things, the thing to note here is that testosterone tends to be optimized in a body fat percentile between about 10 and 19%. On average, the optimal range tends to be like that 12 to 15 range, but anywhere from 10 to like 18, 19 is going to be approximately the same level of like ability. Above 19% body fat, especially when you're getting to like 25% plus, when you're getting into like the obesity range, that is when testosterone is definitely not optimized uh, and you don't want that. And so getting to a healthier standpoint in general will absolutely help with, uh, with your testosterone. And then of course, if you can change your lean body composition to where you have more muscle mass, that will only help you further. And then it just kind of uh, perpetuates itself where like you're stimulating more muscle fibers in your workouts, you're being less stressed, you're getting more sleep, you're eating higher quality foods and you're dropping body fat. All of that will work together to increase your testosterone. And just to give you further testament to this, um, the, the stats that I told you previously were May of 2020 and June of 2021. I got tested another six months later in January of 2022, more recently this year, and I was able to increase my testosterone by like another 10%. So now I'm at 525 nanograms per deciliter, which is getting me like toward like the moderate to almost high end of the testosterone range, but really I'm still moderate. Um, and the reason why I can say this with a smile is because once you're in that healthy range, especially once you're in like the middle end of the healthy range, it's not going to substantially increase your ability to make progress in the gym, like within your physique and your fitness results from continuing to increase your testosterone. Um, however, if you have low testosterone and you get into the moderate range, that absolutely can help you because you are like selling yourself short when you're in that low testosterone range because you're just in an unhealthy state. You don't necessarily have sufficient testosterone to build a, you know, a substantial amount of muscle mass. Um, but even more than that, you just want to feel good and adequate testosterone levels will do that for you. And so you might notice that within the numbers I just said from June of 2021 to January, 2022, about six months, I increased my testosterone by like 10%. That is a very moderate increase, but it is also like the expected or possible increase for someone who's going on a, a fitness journey based on the current scientific literature in terms of all the things I just said, recovery, sleep, diet, exercise, vitamin D, sunlight, all of that. So if you find someone online who is saying that, you know, they, they double their testosterone in a month or you see these massive increases where they're going above the natural range, there's a good chance that there's a reason for that, aka that they are not natural. Uh, there are exceptions to this, like, you know, if I had optimized all my factors within like a month or two, um, it's possible that I could have seen the, the change happen faster. But all in all, it does take time for your testosterone levels to change through consistent and sustained lifestyle changes. Um, if you're curious, this video is sponsored by Let's Get Checked. Let's get checked as how I was able to know the numbers behind all of my testosterone readings uh, across all those various data points. I highly recommend Let's Get Checked. It is a service, an at-home blood test service where you just basically prick your finger, it tests your testosterone levels and any other metrics that you choose to purchase tests for. Um, and it's just been such an empowering thing to know what my levels are and to be able to track it over time to see what the effect of my actions are on my testosterone levels. So if you're looking to get your testosterone levels checked, I highly recommend, check the link in the description, 
Uh, you can use my discount code for um, a discount on your first purchase. And uh, it definitely helps me out, full disclosure. So uh, thank you, Let's Get Checked, for sponsoring this video. And uh, yeah, that covers everything I wanted to say. Um, I'm feeling great with the testosterone levels where they're at, and I can't wait to keep tracking it over time. If you have any questions about any of the testosterone topics that I covered today, please drop me a comment or shoot me a message on Instagram, happy to answer questions. Otherwise, get your first test through Let's Get Checked. You won't regret it. It's just so, so cool being able to see like where your levels are at um, compared to like what the healthy metrics are. And if you are potentially uh, holding yourself back in terms of progress or if you're in a good spot already. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.